until you're on that line. Yeah, Mumi Anderson something said. Well, and, he, and you know what I did? I just keep overstepping it. Yep. So every day I'm getting better. Every day you're getting better and better <laughs> because I learned the lines. <laughs> well, because he keeps overstepping it. I love yeah. it. That guy is, uh, is a riot, honestly. Mumiander has a lot of uh, self-confidence. But yeah, th I, I agree with those kind of statements, right? I think that's how you have to play the offlane. That's when you really learn to play it. Hell, even if you watch some players like... Um, I'm going to actually put an example of Bulldog, right? Some Playing sometimes, yeah, yeah. you'll see that he knows matchups. Even though he hasn't played competitive in years, you'll see it knows matchups so well that he will actually abuse pubs to ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, just because he knows the matchup better than his opponents, and that's just experience. You yeah, know? and stuff like that matters. You know, if you can bait, uh, uh, this is actually a great lane as an example, right? Ursa, uh, famed for his kill potential in lane, but it's ramp up damage, right? If, you, if he hits you ten times, he's going to kill you. But if he hits you three or four times, you're going to be low on HP, but you're still going to be able to outrun him here. So what we're seeing, yeah, little. Just had to TP away. It's a little bit too dicey for him here. TP into the tier one tower, of course. But like you know, good off lane players, what you'll see them do is, especially on the supports, you'll see them take a lot of harass, create a lot of spells, tank a lot of spells, start to run away, and actually kite out uh, safe laners in the first five ten minutes. And that's when the heroes like the Mars, heroes like your Bat Rider, especially that have a lot of different sort of positioning and, and movement related spells, can look to punish here. Um, so you're so much. So you're completely right. I mean, it's not only on the off lane; it's also for the position who has to kind of learn this line to be able to harass effectively on, 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 in the offlane. So exactly. yeah, there's, there's something to be said there as well. The, the Mars is a great hero to do that because he has two spells that put you out of position, so as a nurse. Yep. And when you're seeing Malice, he's not going to go for Plague Wars build in this lane either. He's going to go for the usual build at least. So Kuman will have an easier time here. They won't have to deal with a ward, which is important. Uh, this build also, by the way, Partially the reason why I started getting picked up is that it's a bit more consistent. Even if you don't do well in the lane, like with the Plague Wars build, you're still fine in the mid game because you actually have a lot of kill potential with Venom Scale, which is much more important. No, he shouldn't be Venom Scale, by the way. Go for Van score. He's dead. Yeah, the Curse Dive not ready. The Spirits could help out a bit, but. Nope, Venno has poison sting, so he just has to hit you once, really. He's dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you for uh, uh, it's, it's unfortunate there, but I, I knew as soon as that one connected, Icarus dive on cooldown for eight seconds, and that's really the biggest pain point of playing a Phoenix in lane, is you're incredibly strong when you have your spells. As soon as you don't, or if you're in a lane that has a lot of kill potential against you, you you're really restricted to one spell, realistically, uh, with your fire spirits. And even then, in some lanes, like a, a Tusk Io lane, for example, you need to have both of your spells to not die. Yeah. Uh, so this lane, it's a little similar. If you don't have Icarus Dive, you can definitely tell Melos and Astral are going to be hunting for this Phoenix. Uh, the kills on Takuan are just too hard, frankly, yeah, when you can just easily get them onto the Phoenix. Also, Melos, by the way, the I've seen him play. I mean, up there with Timbersaw is one of the heroes. Fight Rider, I think, is the heroes used to play. Uh, particularly because I think Melos just has... Mm, no, I okay. just like I, I, I got you. Dry, yeah. Right? Because I mean, if you play Timbersaw, Bad Rider, and Ben, no, you're that kind of off laner, right? So, yeah, he, he does know how to kind of push the envelope here enough to the Stark is annoying. You can see Stark is not out of the lane, but he's not canceling the Venno, and Venno's getting a fair amount of last hits. It's not bad. And mid lane, as I said, if Young G's asking for this hero, he knows he has a contingent. Right now, if they can secure his four-minute rune, I think Young G will be fine in this lane. Yeah, perhaps the level two Searing Chains catching Desperate off guard, uh, or a little bit off guard there, but no points into a flame guard unexpectedly. As Kuman's gonna be quick to purge that one off. Fan score though, again, no Icarus dive, but looking for the kill, and they've got it. Venno a little bit too far away. Kuman might look for a revenge kill with boost, especially. It's tempting, uh, but instead, wait, that was first blood? Oh, oh, they denied the Phoenix. Oh, my apologies. First blood actually happened in the mid lane, where Lil very intelligently rolls this to get the four minute rune and gets the kill on the puck. Shaman is, well, I would argue, the strongest, honestly, four minute rune rotator. Because usually in four minute runes, the two fours rotate, right? So you are alone essentially against the enemy mid laner. And if you're alone against the shackles, it's bye bye baby. You know, it it is, baby. yeah. Again, especially because I think I mentioned earlier, with searing chains to set up, that that eliminates so many of the shaman's early game problems of being able to actually get in a position to do anything astral. Yeah, he is. Unfortunately, Kumont, nice positioning there. He's going to be able to body block the rolling boulder. Yes, he gets stunned, but he also gets the kill. This is already three stacks of permanent agi very early on. Wait, did, he, the... did he get that third stack from killing Vanscore? Did Steal agility from Vanscore? Yeah, yeah, you can still steal. Uh, even if oh you my lord. Uh, it's, it's just if you die within the vicinity of Slark and you have an effective one. Uh, what is Venno's build? Is he going for it? Okay. But like I mentioned, he's, he's still going for the poison sting traditional build. The lack of play cards makes it much easier for Slark. And now we're seeing kind of recover in the left. So this is one of the reasons why Venno first picked with actually 
kind of not the best thing anymore, like after a while. Because people started realizing that if you counter Venno, and he's not that great of a hero. Especially with a play cool. Yeah. So this is why I thought the pick was a bit dangerous considering the last pick and as uh, the Thork is having a... He is. This off lane for Hellraiser. This is going a lot better though. Ursa's fine, but so is Rezo. So ideally Rezo is still going to be able to have a lot more game impact early on than an Ursa will, given equal amounts of farm, just based on Pardon me, the play style and the builds of the heroes. Uh, I reckon we are going to probably see a Battle Fury Ursa here just to be able to scale a little bit better with the Slark, uh, especially because Slark naturally has got the better core to core matchup there, so you're not going to be able to fight him early very realistically. Dream Coil will catch our Ember Spirit. The Earth Spirit, however, is not going to catch him with the Rolling Boulder, but he will snap it into with the kick. Astral you want to move around? You want to move around? Let me show you how I can move you around. <laughs> and then he murders the uh, Ember Spirit in cold Radiance blood. Nice little front side there. Top. But in the top lane, Mars now is giving it a lot of space, of course, because they're called out to rotate. And he is... Like, again, Rezo is not meant here to make the Ursa have a bad lane. He's no. just trying to farm himself. Which I would argue on the Mars is probably the right choice. It is. Because you want to create space nice in the mid game as Mars. It is, and, and actually, that's that's quite literally what I said here, right? Because if Ursa gets the same amount of farm that Mars is, which he is, which again is fine, in my opinion, for Puck Champ. Oh, as we're going to get that kill mid lane, uh, Mars is simply going to have more game impact. Again, Ursa cannot fight Slark early on. It just doesn't work like that. Vesper will die yet again in the mid lane. It, they, you know, a cameraman cannot expect that pass to shadow shot the gank. There's the recall. I and saw that one coming. Melis, there we go. Shadow dance. Ooh, blocking the rolling boulder, but not enough to save Vance for. No armor, so the piece will just finish him off. And now we do have play gourds. Venno's done. He's like, all right, I need to win this lane. Or I need to be able to stabilize. He went for the one point in play gourds, but it's a bit too late. You don't yeah. have to walk back to base. You're one or two levels behind. Yeah, Venno's a little bit like a bat rider, where the game feels really crappy for you if you lose your lane, right? Now, uh, these heroes are, I don't want to say engineered to win their lane, but they kind of are. Yep. Uh, it is kind of the preferred play style. Um, so, yeah, the, the fact that the Venom now has taken this third death, I believe. No, just the first death, but has been zoned out incredibly effectively uh, is going to make the game incredibly difficult here. Let me uh, zone in here to catch everything now. We can start now. We have Playboard level 2, I believe, on Venom now, or is he maxing the points? Uh, for our Venom. Yeah, okay, Playboard. For the, for the game that you've been presented. But still, it sucks that you had to build this way because now you will only have impact in the bottom lane. And this is one of the situations where Ember, they can break the boulder. They have the boulder already. Ember yeah. just like trying to, try to fight at nice. the edge, but they still break the Dream Coil. And thanks to the help of the Solar Bind, they guaranteed a kill. Now Astral turned into a chicken, finished off the Spear of Mars. Good rotation by yep. Razors. So that's fine though. Uh, Puck Champ are really happy with that. Yeah. Uh, really great positioning though, like you said there by. Um, Really great positioning by our Ember Spirit there, by Young G, who's able to, he knows, hey, if you kick me right underneath my tower, I'm going to be safe. Uh, unfortunately for him, Puck Champ, they read this and they just, even a level one eliminate actually was enough damage to do the trick there. They're going to be now be looking for Rezo, a bit of a more difficult kill here. He's low on mana, but he's got the Solar Ring. Now Vanscore is here. He's like, hey, Ducalis, what's up, man? Uh. And his rune has been scouted. Everyone just kind of still chilling in lane, surprisingly. Puck's been sent home to refill mana, at least. Uh, we do have level 6 already for our Shaman, so they might look to fight top lane and perhaps try and push an early tower. Boot the Ursa Warrior out of the lane is the idea. There we go. Nice in. Enrage use. There's going to be the Serpent Awards drop. Now, can they pin him to the trees? Rezo doesn't actually have enough mana, but it's not going to matter. As the Serpent Awards will trap Fuzzy Wuzzy inside of, uh, of you know, Bears. Don't know. They don't deal well with snakes. Snakes. Oh, they do not. Well, he just died to the Culver's here. Yeah, the Shaman is staying nearby as Culver trying to go for the second kill. Oh, it's difficult. The spear actually hits him, and he's just in range for the snakes to finish him off. Well played there. Now, the rotation by Young G, guaranteeing another kill against the Caudal. Tried to block that rolling boulder, not in time. That's not enough levels for him to get away. Astral in trouble. No rolling boulder for 12 more seconds. Nine more seconds now. The spear misses. Astral living his life to the fullest, but eventually uh, it all has to end. Yeah, he was tap dancing around them for a little while there, but it's they, have, they just got too much mobility, too much lockdown here early on. Does force out a couple of extra spells, but nothing too major there. Yeah, unfortunately, snakes can't miss. Uh, at least not with blinding light, they can't. Uh, so even though we had a really nice blinding light to stop Rezo from getting the kill with either the God's Rebuke or an auto attack, uh, the snakes, they had it. And great positioning there, as you said. Uh, you, you you called it out, actually. Our Shaman, Lil, just refusing to leave his snakes, his Serpent Wards. Those are his friends.
friends or his family, you know, so he wants to be fighting right near those guys. As we do have ourselves uh, the Diffusal Blade getting picked up first for Slark. This is going to be uh, pretty closely contested in terms of its timing with the Battle Fury on our Ursa Warrior. We'll see who gets what first, but Slark, he's got some pretty good targets to try and kill this game. Venno is almost certainly going to be a free kill for him, assuming there's no plus one there for the Venno to capitalize after he drops the Venomous Gale, or the Poison Nova, sorry. Um, Earth Spirit's a bit of a tougher kill for him, uh, but Coddle is basically free agility to him this game. The Slark is really just going to be aiming for him once he gets the Diffusal up and running. Uh, Coddle, low armor, high mana, so even if you, you completely nuke his mana, uh, you still do crap tons of damage to him as Slark. Bottom lane, they can play torch this next to the Plague Blades. Yeah, they can, but Kumon's actually sticking around, not making it too easy. Crit. That's the right play. It, it is, yeah, because Crit's farm is going to be impeded by this. You can see he's like, all right, fine, you can defend this tower, I'll go farm my jungle. But this is not what Crit wants to be doing. He wants to be hitting lane creep. They get more gold at this stage of the game because you can farm them faster and more consistently. Now he's going to TP top. As soon as he sees the Ursa leaves, he's out of there. He's already delayed that one enough. A really smart move here for Kumon. Well, oh, Zucalus in the top lane. They're recalling Hawkeye Bat. Yep, here they go. Another Shadow Dance, though. Okay, he's fine. Dark Pact on time to make sure that Silence is not effective. Arena Blood is available, but they shouldn't spear the puck. Now you get punished by the Dream Coil and Resolution to be in trouble. Blind Light breaking that resolution. Thanks to that Soul Blind, you get extra passive damage onto him. He survived for now, but not for long. Rezo will fall, but together with Desperate, not a bad trade, honestly. Outlander for mid, Kumen's still around. You hex up the Earth Spirit, and the Solus going to die to that Steering Chains combo in the end. I hear. He's going to take out the Dark Pact. No, the Dark Pact also dealt damage to him, and the Earth Spirit is trying to finish him off in the back lines as we watch Lil Pizzle damage. Thought he was going to take down Young G rotating on in as well. Yeah, I mean, he purged off one of those, but... That was, that was so shocking because they, they recalled the puck in and I was expecting almost straight away a rolling boulder into a dream coil and just kicking him before you can purge off the stun. We didn't see any of that. Um, instead, they tried for the coil kill onto the Mars, but all they do is, is really kind of bait the puck in to, to Illusory would have been way too far out of position. By that time, Slark's already back up to full HP, so he's able to get involved in that kill. He's up to five stolen permanent agility now. I don't know. I feel like Puck Champ, that could have been executed a little bit better, but I think at the end of the day, they're pretty happy to have gotten the kill onto the Slark regardless, so. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I, I see the chat going insane about this. The agility you gain, by the way, by the Edward Shift is not that big a deal. It's no, one agility no, per year. It's like, even if you get the 20 agility, like, it's nice, it's a bonus for sure, but it's not like Silence or, or other hero like Pudge, for example. It is permanently scaling, though. It is permanent scaling, but usually a Slark, realistically, in a game, even when it denies, which actually add, of course, a lot to it, with nifty trick, uh, it's usually, what, 20, 30 agility? Like, that's nice, it's very good, but ideally, you just want to get killed. If a Slark gets no kills, but a lot of farm, he's happier, frankly, in the yeah, that's true. So that's why we never, rarely you'll see it in the cast mention that it's like, oh, five agility, eh, talk to him. I, I just, I like saying it because... Oh, because probably it, scaling is important. And it's just indicative of how this game is going so exactly. far, right? I think that's better. Uh, it's, it's like when you mention Network. There's a 2K Network lead for Hellraisers. What does that mean? That means they've gotten some better engagements here in the laning stage. And Puck Champ kind of playing from behind, but this is a good initiation. Now as Hellraisers will be able to actually get the jumps onto the Venom Answer. No chance of it off the ult. See, Astro couldn't do much either about that one. Ducalis in the meantime is going to be eating a nice big old shadow. There's going to be a bit of Luminate coming out from him, though. Doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Only level one. Astral rooted down as he's going to experience now a nice little uh, egg surprise courtesy of Phoenix. See, this is what matters, I would say, much more. Which is yeah. the fact that you're controlling the map. You're a capable because Slark stood in the bottom lane for so long, which was the right play by Kuman. You made the Venom Answer kind of useful early. Because the whole point of Venom is to set up your soul booth, put your play course, take your tower, and move around the map using Venom at scale. Since you couldn't do that, Hellraiser wins a lot in the Space Wars. Managed to not rotate mid. Takes an easy tower, taking advantage of Shadow Shaman. Wards, doubly as powerful as the big wards, and now Hellraiser controls the map, and they have already farmed Slark. That even went for a Diffusal Blade build. He's ready to fight in the early mid-game fights. That's the whole point of this build. He is, yeah. Like I said, Coddle's basically free kills for him. Ursa's got the Battle Fury. It's not on impossible to fight with the Battle Fury, um, but there are better first items, right? Whereas Link, whereas Diffusal Blade is the premier first item to fight with on a Slark. Yeah. So that's going to be the difference. So Ursa, it's not impossible for him to show up to fights. In fact, his, pref his presence, rather, 
might be even mandatory here to make sure they don't completely get 5v4 wiped because Slark's going to be fighting with them. They need someone to hit the egg. Right now, they've got fantastic control onto Desperate. They've, they've shown it time and time again. We'll see Pug Champ now try for a kill their own in mid lane. Okay. Venom's not a day. Hold on. Here he's going. Like here. Yeah, he is. But he's going to die. Yeah, did he see the voice though before he died? The shadow from the Pug. Super going to come out and die. Vance score? No. He didn't have it though, so it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Desperate will die instead, thanks to the spear, and that's going to still be a win for HR. Yeah, big win. Not much faith, it seems like. Astral. Oh, he rolling rolled back rolled in. Away. All right. Yeah, I'll get you, Kuman. He died. Did he mean? I do not know. I think maybe the the, the wall sending him flying backwards might have <laughs> might have actually messed up with his positioning. I'm not really sure. I don't know. It depends, because a lot of Earth Spirit players, a lot of the older ones I know, they actually throw down their remnants manually. Um, but they added a change where if you double tap the button and you don't have it on quick cast, which you should, by the way, if you have a lot of trouble playing Earth Spirit, either try double tapping the button with regular cast or turn on, on turn on quick cast. Uh, quick cast is made for Earth Spirit. Uh, so a lot of the players I know will, pr they prefer throwing it down manually. So it seems like a really weird mistake to make because normally they, they when they roll, they, they've already pressed the button. Uh, and they know which way they want to go. So, yeah, it's kind of a weird one. Maybe he thought he can snipe the, the Slark there, but an unfortunate fight, and they just keep down Desperate, locked down basically forever, pinned to the wall, silenced, stunned, and absolutely murdered. They just kind of lack the follow-up early damage here. Poison Nova is really not dealing it. Well, they're managing to take uh, now another tower, which, of course, this is the sacrifice you made mid. You know, you try to create space mid, doesn't really work out. And so you take a tower up top using the sh Radiance middle tower. And Sunday you're gonna tower. take a tier two, which allows you to Dyer's take over the enemy jungle tower. completely. Which is what looking for after all, as Hellraiser's looking to play a mid game trap. Ursa, despite him supposedly being an early game hero with a new Battle Fury build, dude, kind of slow. No, he's not. Yeah. yeah, so you're more of a mid game oriented, like mid 25, I mean, maybe even earlier than that. Yeah, you're, like, you're especially not an early game hero when compared to a Diffusal Slark. Exactly, which itemized completely for the start of the game. And this build is starting to come back a bit for the Slark. I think in certain games it's kind of nice. Not always, uh, you know, the Echo Saber Shadow and Silver Edge build or yeah. I, build is I no wouldn't problem. even say that. I mean, like, this, this this really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that's played Dota, especially for old Ursa, who used no, to just... it used to be a very popular build. Yeah, yeah, who used to build just Blink Dagger first item. It's, it's still the same kind of matchup here. Well, it's, right now, it's, you go for Defusal and you go for BKB and you just super... Wrong early. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but I was talking about Ursa, who would be old Ursa before Battle Fury was a thing. Well, first of all, he was unpicked in pro professional. But, but like in pubs, right, he would go Blink Dagger, Mask of Madness, BKB Basher. Oh, right. yeah, actually, the Mask of Madness is not good. Oh. F-Shackle still. Next thought's a fair amount of time he wouldn't be in rage. There's the Shackles. Okay, they're going to come in perfectly, but I think it's fine. With the Reno 1, they guarantee the kill on Ursa. Good luck. Yep, they just need to be able to do damage so he doesn't get a free recall away. Kuman, in the meantime, he's going to be able to completely dodge the gank. He says, see you later. Uh, just goes invis with the shadow dance, and he's already level 14. I got press on, so so no need for BKB. I, I see the point, right? Like, you don't really need it that much this game. At best, to mitigate the Venomancer's damage. Yeah. And the Earth Spirit to some degree. I, I mean, you know, you'd think that the Puck Dream Core would be a bigger issue than it is, but obviously not, because he doesn't feel that way. I mean, Master Tier Puck here. Sorry, Master Tier Venomancer, that is. Sorry, let me try that Slark. third time of the charm. Master Tier Slark here. Uh, so he's going to be able to probably know what's best there. Three chances, you had ten options. Not that bad, actually. Uh, not that bad. Third, three, third time, you know? It's third uh, time of the charm, man. Yeah. Oh, that was a bit. We actually planned that. Well, <laughs> you guys thought Seek and Strike is actually like this? <laughs> a little, little do you know. He's actually... Uh, a four-stop almost complete on Ducala, so a four-stop also on the Veno. A good way to deal with the Veno. Still, though, with S and Y, Slark relies much less on his pounds and being able to get you with the purge and just runs at you after yeah. it's out dance you're done He's for. got so much damage here, uh, even versus the Ursa. If Ursa's running away in rage, trying to run, Slark's like, okay, I'll just steal more Agi from you and that'll make the next goal a little bit easier. Oh, it's it's not looking too good here for sure for the side of Puck Champ this time around. They're down 5k already, 19 minutes in. They're already kind of pinned basically to this side of the map, maybe to here, but you can see, you cross the line, Kyle, we're gonna kill you. Eventually. We'll get you though. There it is. Well, and now. Said, nice stacks, not bad. You know, extra agility, always nice to have them. Yeah. And with this, you are starting to take the tier two mid, probably. I mean, honestly, without Veno, you might be able to threaten it. Tier two mid is al always the hardest one to take. That's why in, in the Eastern European region, you'll see they take the tier one and the tier. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, just another note here on the Slark, right, and, and Permanent Agi. It helps because it raises your floor of starting agility. Usually Slark in the... Stack gain is so long. Yeah, usually your your early game fights look like, hold on, I have to click them ten times, and then I start actually doing damage. Whereas now, it's looking a little bit more like, okay, let me click them two or three times, and then I'm really doing damage already. So it makes the kills a little bit easier, but, you know, by no means does that mean he, this is an unlosable game. Or anything. That's the point of the fact that they yep, get it all. And again, very simple for them. Uh, you don't want to keep beating kills like this. Okay, find the Coddle as well. In the wrong position, Coddle is out for the counter. And he finishes up the fire spin with the Arena Blood. They trap the Ursa. And he's fine. He's just killing stats from Trillot. And they even commit the Supernova here. Nice pair of bars for the end of the Arena. Catching the Earthspread as he comes back in. That's a buyback on the Earthspread. A dieback, actually. How are we just destroying them? And that's the point to be made, by the way. You're totally right. Because that gain on Stark is so awful, all you're doing is allowing yourself to be a normal hero at the start of the fight. Exactly. Which, which is a big thing for Slark, so it's yeah. important to notice, but it's... But don't get crazy. It's, it's not, not it's the not most possible. impactful thing. Yeah, Desperate is able to win a 1v1 here versus the Ember Spirit somehow. I'm not really sure how that happened. Just a simple Dream Coil there into the Mage Slayer. Uh, okay, Radiant's it's by the way Desolator on the Ember Spirit, so uh, those those Slide of Fists are incredibly... He did go for the North American build then. They're, like it. they're very deadly right now, yeah, so keep your eyes on for that. But yeah, I mean, we saw, right? Oh, he popped in Rage. Guess I'll just start to steal more stacks. He's at 23 right now, 69 agility. Oh, very nice, changed, momentarily. Decreasing. decreasing now, of course, as it will time out. But now, those, are the, those are the Ursa stacks now, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 15 hits he's yeah it, it, exactly, right? So it's it's, it's really tough here for Fuck Champ now. 10k, they've, they've already just doubled the net worth lead here in that fight alone. Of course, a very oppressive hero. Because the hero's really good late game as well, right? As long as you just have the... Fine. If you don't have the right control or the right lineup against the Slark, this is a really yeah. easy game for and, Slark. And we're, we're starting to see like pretty similar signs of defeat. Usually one thing, I don't know about you, one thing I would like to look for is, is the position 4 more farm than the off lane? And that's yes. the case here. And also a Shadow Shaman, one of the better heroes to use that farm on. Oh yeah, definitely. He's already got the Blink Dagger and now the Aether Lens. And now BKB. BKB, which is great. No way to shut him up. So if uh, he's going to be uh, channeling that uh, shackles on one of your heroes, there's nothing to release your friend there. Yeah. And because of that, the Shadow Shaman doesn't go, doesn't go for the shard because if you opt for the Blink Dagger, it's much better to go for BKB so you can be a bit safer. Yeah. And Blink does allow you to play more aggressively, however, it's much more dangerous. So that's why a lot of shamans in more even games, they'll go for the shard instead. Because yeah, the extra definitely. range is more valuable. Tends yeah. to Whereas this game, being able to Blink, Hex, BKB, and Shackle right. immediately, exactly. uh, that provides you a lot more useful. Because then you're, you're basically like a position three. Exactly. Like, yeah. honestly, at that stage, hey, I'm. And Rezo's a position two this game, so. I mean, with his farm, yeah, it's kind of looking like it here. They have found our Ursa Warrior. Shaq is broken. Oh, he's going to get outside the arena. Now he's going to be hit the walls. Ducalis, no chance to do a single thing there. Earth Spirit just rolling around here, having a ball. But unfortunately, he will be the ball at the end as Young G will go ahead and pop him a little bit more. Crap decided. Why not? Actually, Slark will die to the puck. In the meantime, Crit, now Krillat, rather, is going to turn and look to fight with his BKB duration. Look at the damage he's got here. Dels get two kills. Okay, they, not a bad fight, Puck Champ. They messed up, though. The Hellbirds just messed up. I don't know if you saw that, but when the snow was about to end, the enrage, right? So he was going to get full stun by the supernova. But Rezo not being able to calculate that perfectly, would he yields the Ursa. Oh, I did not notice that. Thank yeah. you for calling that out. Yeah, I was so wondering why, why he so was he So he avoided the stun, which why is why they couldn't kill. Yeah. I think it was Rezo that yields them. I don't know if they have any other yields. Uh, let me check. No, it must have been Rezo. Could oh, no, it could be Young G, too. Been Young G. One of the two uh, yields. I didn't really check who it was. It doesn't really matter, though. The point is they use them, avoid the supernova stun, they couldn't continue that. And then yeah. when the puck was murdered in the Sark, they're like, oh, what do we do? Do we stay for the Ursa? Yeah, kind of difficult, because we just gave him 2.5 seconds in vulnerability, yeah. so... That's, uh, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter who It was them. so, so even, though, like, his enrage just ended as they used them, the supernova was about to stun, right? Ooh. That that it was like... I, I like can understand that kind of mistake. SEA smoke, they're baiting Melis yet again. Dual Scepter ready for Rezo. He's gonna now pop the BKB. He's gonna find Melis at the very least, and Ducalis is basically a free kill. He's gonna get a little wood before he goes, but Young G has been caught, and they have got the damage. They're gonna be shackled down for now. Can they actually turn this into a kill? Desperate, unable to live. Does drop the Dream Coil onto Kumon, who does not purge it off here, actually, so it's gonna be a full stun on the coil. That's not gonna matter very much here to Astral, however, who is completely surrounded now by three. Hoping for the kill on the dance score. 
Doesn't get it. Human instead right comes down with the blink dagger now. Jumps forward for Melis as well. Immediately pouncing to him. Double kill for Kumon. This blink dagger already starting to pay off for him. He just picked it up in between the fights. Yeah, much much better. I like the blink dagger build for Stark. Now with a swift blink, honestly, blink dagger seems oh, yeah. like it's yeah. much more relevant than Stark. Swift blink has pretty much been picked up on everyone and their mother. And the Slark here is actually not a bad hero to use this item on, you know. I'm Usually, traditionally, back with Blink Dagger and, and a Shadow Blade was a choice. The choice is always pulled down to this. Do you have map control? Then you go for the Blink Dagger. If you not have map control, you go for the Shadow Blade, right? And then there were times when one was better than the other, depending on the meta. But if you go 50-50, that was the choice between the two of them. So it's now the Swift Blink has kind of been added to the game. It's very good for Slark. Why not? Go for it. So, a, a quick question, just because I'm, I'm curious on the interaction. With phased movement speed, obviously that means you move through things and it's increased movement speed. Uh, but does phased as well give you the uh, additional turn speed increase? Or is that... Oh, that's just phased boots. That's just phased boots. Yeah, yeah, okay, phased so that's not tied speed. to phased. No, no. no. Okay. There's other, there's other things that give you phased. I, I can't think. There's other things that give you yeah, yeah. Actually, like a lot of invisibilities, for example. Sure, like, uh, sure, sure. sure. Or, uh, or Vendetta or, is another one. Yeah, they all yep. give you phased. They, they, don't, they okay. don't give you... Cards. No, no, you're totally right. Thank you for... Because uh, I was going to say, because that also helps Slark a lot in terms of being able to uh, set the pounce up, right? Of course, of course. But his phase is just... He's really fast. No, he's he's very fast, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what he'll get with a Swift Blink. And it w goes well with him, because Swift Blink is best, as we've, as we've seen from mid one. On here, like, to burst you down. He argues Slark. Yes, he likes long team fights, but if he can ideally burst on a support in the beginning and steal his stats. Absolutely here. Well, Puck Champ, we've seen them come back from probably just around a 10k, a 10, 11k net worth difference before. So Hellraiser is, 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 it is, but they've been in this position here just before. So, so they, it can be done. Proof of Concept has not only, you know, worked, but they also immediately won the game after here. Uh, they recall Puck. Oh, they have Puck. Ags as well on Puck. That's they, they do. Yep, Basher uh, delivered here for Krillat. Rezo might just blink in here, this madman. That's right. Yeah. Do you know this man? You look like he's, he's waiting for his he's, team he's behind him. He's thinking about it. Nah, Ryza doesn't do oh, it. That'll show you, Alvo. No, dude, see? He blinked in a, in a kind of like a small place to get vision. Very smart, actually. Now, bad score. Oh, that's the edge. Use a supernova? Nope, he's hit. Silence of forehead. Fuel through the spell. Super has no available. There's a score the egg in a matter of seconds. I'm saying he's trying to stop the puck with the shackles, but they'll still be able to break the egg. Krillat, though, now in trouble. No more in rage. Doesn't have BKB either. Man find the start and also resolution. While the Ember's trying to deal with the puck, Krillat is about to die to Kuban. He's trying to play with the shadows, not going to win. Instead, Desperate will get the kill on Ember, though, so at least they trade that nicely. But Kuman still alive, and to win the core-to-core -core matchup here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slight crash in there. I think he said something along the lines of Ember trying to kill the puck. Really, he was trying to outlive the puck, because Puck was kicking his butt there, to be honest. Uh, without really the Aghanim Scepter uh, ignoring the magic damage or the Daedalus, uh, Ember really starts to struggle there in that one-on-one, -on -one as, as we've, we've now seen with the second loss there in terms of uh, their one-on-one -on -one duel. They, they really, like, kind of just find each other in these fights and fight each one one I think much to the benefit here, to be honest, of Puck Champ. Because Ember has got a lot of benefit here, a slight of fisting around just everyone in the fights, right? Because that does synergize really, really nicely, not only with Slark, but also with God's Rebuke, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that could be using that Desolator damage, so it's actually kind of a really big move from Desperate just to be able to kind of lock him down in 1v1. Because honestly, when Puck has dropped the coil, there's not much that you really bring to the fight after that. Well, then you bring damage and mobility. Sure. But if they don't concentrate on you, you're kind of right. You're just, like, you're just a source of magical damage, but if they, they're going for the Ursa, which is kiteable and killable, yeah, yeah. this is what happens. I would tell Hellraiser's playing this team fight well, though. They're separating their efforts nicely. I think that Supernova was fine, because you wasted the whole BKB just on Supernova. It was, yeah. Which is honestly a win. It's kind of a uh, Razor's there, because then Slark can just beat him. And now we have Basher to deal with BKB. Review for Puck Champ pretty easily, as we've now seen twice. Oh. What I'm seeing right now is that Puck Champ really wishes to pick something like Tide or Centaur. Not much, right? He's a big source of damage, but you would like to have yeah. the extra attack or initiation. I mean, would, would, would the Tide have done more or, or better or worse versus the Spark, though? Oh, no, the lane would have yeah. been Yeah, the lane would have I, I feel like we, we find ourselves in a very similar situation. There's a better pick, for sure. No, no, I wouldn't say better pick. I'm more saying that in the position you find yourself now, you don't have a Force Multiplier to turn the... Uh, okay. Venno doesn't fulfill that role. Venno's no. just... Oh, it's been worth it. And then, you, know. you, you need to, like we said earlier, you need to kind of win your lane if that's the type of Venno you, you're hoping to be playing. Yep. <laughs> And, uh, well, he's gonna have Ag soon enough. That's gonna dramatically increase his damage. Hopefully he's level 18 by then, though. As, uh, it's not just a flat increase there. And Plague Wars do make it pretty annoying to Siege, canceling the Blink Daggers here on your Mars, uh, on your Slark as well, actually, so... You know, they, they still got a chance here on the high ground.
And you've got good heroes mm -hmm. to run up your high ground, though. I think now, like, everyone has Blink Dagger? Yeah, okay, so four heroes have Blink Dagger here for Hellraisers. One of them doesn't, but it's a Phoenix, so does that even matter? And actually, one of them, another one doesn't, it's the Ember. Uh, yeah, uh, the Ember is probably the best kill right now for Puck Champ as it stands, right? Like, the easiest kill to go on first. They have enough control to murder him, and he brings a lot of damage. He kind of went for a pseudo-glass cannon build. Once he gets the BKB, what? this is going to change. Who? Ember. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's why I was commenting on, like, saying, yes, once he gets the BKB, this might change a bit, but Dream Coil is still an issue. And I think right now, if you're Puck Champ, you're like, kill Ember first, and then we deal with the rest. Yeah, I mean, we well, already... Unless, unless Rezo does this. Right, I was praising you earlier, dude. What, what is this play? BKB? I mean, why are you farming here? Oh, he you found know? them. They were smoked. I just didn't even fight. I don't know. Arena Bug, a Supernova advanced score. He wanted to use the egg outside the arena. Great. Right. Really? Just, just walks yeah. out. He BKBs in the wall to make sure they can't really find it hiding in the tree. All right, so it looks like Ducalis is going to be the only one to drop here. Not that bad, actually. Rezo, Rezo knew that his team was nearby. My bad. My bad for uh, jumping the gun. Yeah, it still wasn't that good of a fight for them, though. Position 5 for position 5. Your position 5 buys back. KB. I mean, you got a BKB out of the Ursa, though, for it. So I would say that's just about even there. Who is now actually going for his own Blink Dagger? Just everyone wants Blinks Mark these games. I think we have like six blinks and already. Blink, this is so good, dude. With the swift blink, I see no reason why a carry would ever pick up any of them. Well, we, have, we have four blinks, seem to be five. So, swift blink is two. Like, puck, whatever, I don't care. But Arsa and Slark specific? Team one. He pressed one key. With swift, after swift blink, he pressed one key. Uh, eggs finished now for Venno. So, Melis now having a little bit more damage here. Well, what was he saying? Then Ventrilo in that song. Ventrilo, that's very oh old. Oh my lord, even. I'm really used to use X-Fire to communicate with my friends. I never used X-Fire. I was on Mumble, Ventrilo, and Mumble TeamSpeak. Too. I, I used to do my cast, actually. When I were casting TI4. Skype. The, 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 the TI4 uh, Spanish official cast was done through Mumble. All through Mumble. Mm -hmm. To get on the server. It's good it voice comps. It's good voice comps. Still, still use, better than Discord sometimes. Still use TeamSpeak for a lot of things as well here these days. You'd be surprised. No, TeamSpeak's very great. Uh, he calls me a boomer every time I want to use it, so. <laughs> Krila is going to be going now out for the Abyssal Blade immediately after the Blink Dagger. So just hoping to try and burst someone down. I do suspect it's the Ember Hero. That Aghanim Scepter not going to do a whole lot now, now that Ursa has his Basher. He's going to have the Blink here. And uh, yeah, with, with, with the Dream Coil, Aghanim Scepter upgraded on our Ember. Not much to hope to do here. So maybe a little bit of, of praying to RNGs is here for our Ember not to die very quickly. He's, He's probably target number one here as the BKB is not. All right now in the Slark, if you check that can be agility, yeah, it's kind of relevant for a different reason. Like I guess, around minute, like around 20 agility, usually what you get in a game, a bit more maybe. Uh, but it's becoming relevant because of the armor this gives you, which is going to help you a lot against the Ursa. Slark doesn't like to go for the armor items. Its stats items are nice, but he didn't go for Scotty this game. So uh, yeah, it's queued up now. Yeah, having a bit of that extra, yeah, he's going to go for it next. Having a bit of that extra armor in the beginning of the fight. So it, wait, it changes from being kind of like an offensive ability in the early mid game to being a bit more defensive now against the Ursa. Because he's going to burst you down regardless, right? I imagine Puck Champ here, it looked like they were going to smoke, but they know it's not time for Roche yet. It's about another up to 30, well, 30 seconds to three and a half minutes here. Uh, but they probably know Hellraisers are going to be checking it as soon as in 30 seconds. So it looks like they may be going to, uh, once again, just going to try and uh, the old reliable play here after a little bit of server lag. Malice is going to actually drop back into the smoke after he pushes the wave. But Hellraisers are holding the line here just across the map as Malice's smoke will now break. He's going to scout Banscore, who's going to jump back in and scout him. There's going to be the official blade for Smart. He gets off the Poison Nova. Freelat looking to jump in onto anyone as well. Oh, they will be able to save Malice. Nope, Young G is there. Therefore, the kill, Kumon, though, is completely out of position here, but also is our Earth Spirit. Go for Astro first, but I know where. What was that? I, I, it seemed like they could have killed a Slark even after his Shadow Dance, right? It just, yeah. They just a bit too afraid of going on to it. They knew the Supernova was still available, they knew the Arena Blood was still available. Yeah. yeah still, that weird play, though, by Earth Spirit. Like, I know Venno is, honestly, he's meant to die. Like, he's meant to walk into the fight, spit on everyone, and then die, right? Uh, but. It looks like, uh, once again, they kind of got split in two there. We saw them yes. do that to Kumon last game on the Wraith King when they fought here and said it was their turn. Uh, Ursa blinks in. That's a one-way trip for him. So I think exactly. Astral goes to chase, but they were kind of getting counter-initiated from here with the Slark. So they kind of had no good opportunity for anything. I think Krila just BKBs and TPs away, essentially. And, and you as uh, Puck Champ have a difficulty breaking the back line, particularly this game, and try to play as chaotic as enemy team. Because even though Puck and Ursa have actually decent mobility right now, uh, and Earth Spray does as well. You're running into a Shaman 
a Phoenix and sometimes even an Ember in the back line, right? Which have insane amount of catch, you pretty much have to activate your BKBs beforehand. And if you activate your BKBs to just deal with them, Mars can deal with you later, so... It's a whole ordeal, it's a difficult fight to play for Puck Champ. It's not impossible, but their lack of a really solid initiation besides the Puck is, is making them falter. Oh, he did go for the Shard as well. I think the Shard's pretty nice. It gives you the extra range for Venomous Scale, and every time it hits a hero, it's something to do with Lake Woods. Hi, Rezo. Okay, that arena was not great, but Earth Rage just seems stuck right now. Nope, they actually speared into the arena. That's a new one. As the Puck should break the Supernova, he can do it in time. It loses your orb, talks away. Puck is fine. Yeah, that's a BKB for that one, though. And the Dream Shaman. Coil onto the Shaman. They might look to turn onto him now. Okay. As we see, the Poison Nova in the back lines. They will snap that Coil. Down he goes as soon as the Super Awards come out as well. Young G with his own BKB, unfortunately, can't find a target. Target will only get the coddle to buy back here as both supports will uh, die. Uh oh, Astral is okay for now. Actually, it might be a bait as there's gonna be the bash onto Rezo. Is he going to live? There's gonna be the Halberd saving a bit, a bit of time. But Krelon pinned to the tree, four steps away. He's not gonna live. Kumon now with a double kill looking for more. He's gonna find three and he's not done quite yet. There is four looking for the fifth one. It's gonna be desperate, hard to catch this one. Will he be able to time the pounce? Doesn't look, oh, he's got a blink dagger. Give him the rampage. There it is. Five kills for Kumon, and that just might be it. There we go. There we go. That, that means at least two lanes of racks, probably. No, one at least, because the Venom's going to come back soon. He might be able to do something to deter you from the second one. You can buy back on Puck here. Still a huge win for Hull Razors, though. And now even harder for Puck Tech to come back. They're not even designed to play from this far behind. No, so certainly not. Not with the Ursa, especially. No, I would even say Venom is the worst defender I've played from behind. He's terrible at playing from behind. Yeah. Like, guys, I have so much damage, I don't know what he cares about. Shut up. Yeah, we also uh, a Swift Blink on top of the 65 Essence Shift duration, so he's going to have plenty of agility, plenty of armor, 44 plus 4. TB who, he's saying? Bye bye, Melis. Yep. Uh, a little bit more. With, I think he has a 2.1 agility gain or 2.4 agility gain for the level. Oh, 1.7, not even. I was giving him more credit than I thought. Hey, he's awful. He well, barely gets agility level. It's not quite his fault, but I know what you're saying. It is his yeah. fault. Of course it is. Because he gets condemned. Because he escaped from prison. That's why he doesn't get stats. But that's true. He's got to steal all of them. Yeah. Well, wow. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Actually. Yeah, it does. This hero is very low friendly. And he's uh, going to run into Roach here. Start going Burr on Roshan. Uh, they couldn't quite go for the Megas there. They did get pretty easily two lanes to the barracks. An extra kill onto Venomancer. Malice at this point is like, why? He's 0, 10, and 10. Uh, they get a third kill now onto Ducalis. That's just Lil, by the way. Drops the Servant Wards there for the kill. He's got BKB. Shaman's been amazing this game. Obviously. He has. Uh, who knows? I mean, maybe if they do mount a comeback, we do have a contender. It's the same hero as well for the Malk Award. Our, uh, our Venno. No, our Venno. If they do mount a comeback. This might be the Malk thought. Well, yeah, Malk was right about his performance, though. <laughs> his team just hard carried to there. I mean, I'm sure he'll admit that, too. Yeah. Also, I was old Dota. You know, people are much better now. You get into a 3K game now, and you're like, wow, he's pulled out of pole? Oh my goodness. <laughs> An SCA of all places? Anyway, uh -oh. XC, first crit. Another time that we see this holding corner initiation. Not very good. Okay, arena blood use. The Spear of Mars misses. Not that big a deal, though. Kuman immediately with a match. Look at that swift like damage. Oh my goodness. Bye bye, Krillin. And Venno joins the cemetery. Easy for Kuman to go further. The rolling board does nothing. Astral's dead. But they bought back on the Earth, so they try to go for the punch and they get a lucky bash. For now, the Lizard Orb impossible. The oh, Super Nova is triggered. Beautiful Spear of Mars. As the Puck is trying to break it, but it's impossible. He's been hexed. Do you want some chicken with those eggs as they finish off the Ursa? That's going to be a whole plethora of kills for Hellraisers Kuman. and a quick disconnect. Kuman's like, it's a Give me a double ram double rampage here for Kuman just before the Ancient explodes. Couldn't have been any closer. For him as Hellraisers will force a game number three. They're not out of it here quite yet. Uh, they show. Oh, 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 apparently it's, uh, you know, Dota 2 server.